Hello and welcome back. <laughs> Hello and welcome to our YouTube channel. In today's episode, we want to take you aboard our lovely Halberg C352 and show you why it might be one of the best boats for cruising. of you who don't know us, I'm Leo, behind the camera is Penille, and somewhere here is Kai, and our boat is uh, called Doryman. We decided to buy a Halberg Rassi because we think they, they have a great reputation, there are numerous boats doing the same thing, sailing around the world, they're well equipped, they hold their value pretty well, so we kind of see it also like a good sort of investment. So we went and bought Dory back in 2018 and lived for a couple of years on her in Denmark, in Copenhagen, throughout the year. And in 2021, we started this adventure. But anyway, why do we think that this boat is such a perfect match? Firstly, we think that uh, any 35 feeter in this size is a pretty good size for a low or medium budget and for two people. This specific boat has also other advantages. It's super well designed. It is super strong. It has a really good reputation. It sails really well. It is already by default equipped really well for long time cruising. So it has big water tanks, it has good diesel tanks, it's very sturdily built. It's basically ready to go. So that's why we really loved it. She performs despite her big displacement, uh, even in light wind very well. And she also has a short mast, the some with a higher mast, so they will perform even better. If you have a spinner car, it's a great addition. And as heavier the wind gets the faster she gets as well and she really likes it rough <laughs> she never really has a big and strong weather helm so you're really comfortable sailing her which also means that if you have an autopilot he doesn't need to work that hard so you're really energy efficient which is great when you do longer trips another important factor when you do cruising is of course not only the performance i mean it doesn't matter too much you have all the time in the world but it's mostly safety and we we think that this boat is extraordinary in this aspect, like it feels always really safe. You stay relatively or mostly dry, especially in the center cockpit. Even if you have to walk to the mast for reefing and stuff, it always feels very safe because it's high and you, you have options to hold on everywhere. So, And as I mentioned, it's a very sturdy build, so you have kind of a warranty that this boat will, you know, will last and will hold. <laughs> It's built to do that, so it's not like a day cruiser built for like a chartering. It's built for adventure. You always have a great time on a Halberg AC3. <laughs> no, of course, yeah. So why do we love this boat? Of course, we're biased because we own the boat. But uh, what we think is also that if you are on a tight budget or in a semi-tight budget, any 35 strong build boat. Uh, will be great like the bigger you go the more expensive it gets but also everything on maintenance and repairs and harbors everything cruising tax skyrockets and so you end up having a lot of space but you perhaps lose a bit of the fun because you end up working and fixing the boat or paying all the time so what we have found with this boat it has enough space for us it sails very nicely it's easy to sail, it, you're ready in just five, six minutes, you have everything done, so you sail even the smallest distances, the lightest winds, and you just enjoy sailing. And of course you have to do repairs and everything, but it's kind of limited, like you don't have a 20 meter mast, you just have a 12 meter mast, and everything is a bit cheaper and easier to fix. So that's why we think that this 35 feet or 36 or whatever is kind of a great boat for such adventures. But all of you will probably ask, like, yeah, but it sounds so perfect, so what are the flaws with that boat? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously we can't tell there are no flaws. No, there are a couple of flaws we we have found, but they are not, they're rather minor, like 
I'm a bit unhappy with the water tank, even though it's big, 300 liters. It's really hard to clean, so you always have a little bit of a taste. Uh, but the biggest flaw and the biggest embarrassment you will have with this boat is going reverse. Like, there will be people to te that tell you that this boat goes reverse, but if any of you in the comments has a Halberg Rassi 352 and now knows how to properly reverse it, comment and let us know, because we haven't figured it out yet. Another flaw we find, and it's rather funny no boat has it, is that it doesn't come by default with a solar arch. So Halberg Rassi, if you're listening, build your new boats with solar panels, like... <laughs> Uh, what else? No, it, it's really a great boat. Like some other really great features is the hard shield uh, spray hood, like with proper glass, so it's always clean, you have great visibility. Also the hatches are real glass in this model, so no scratches or whatever, they don't get destroyed by the sun. The woodware is amazing in this boat, like it's like new still, okay, if you scratch it, but otherwise it's amazing. Yeah, there's love to detail, many many storage opportunities inside the boat, behind the pillows, behind the beds, behind, under the beds, everything. But I think we should go into a more detailed video some other time to show you more specifically what we have done to the boat and what upgrades we did and maybe some other flaws or maybe some other improvements that we would have liked to do on the boat. So stay tuned for that. But anyway, I wasted enough time, so now we're gonna go and anchor and Penilla will take you downstairs to show you how the boat is from the inside. Welcome to our boat and our home. Let me give you a tour inside. So this is a Helbeck Rassi, which means there are a lot of nice storage places, a lot of hidden places everywhere. Um, we mainly use ours for, ours for food, like there's food in here, there's food there, some alcohol, this is a bar, um, and then we have the library over there, just a few books. Anyway, underneath here, you can open up, and this is actually one big room where we stuff a lot of things. Right now it's diving gear and stuff we have in there. Um, you can also open up in here. Right now it's Kai's food and an extra sale, I think. Mm. Underneath here is the diesel tank. So there's nothing really, but that's actually underneath the bed. My favorite magic trick. A lot of people always get very amazed. Ta da! Ta -da. Storage everywhere. <laughs> and here we have extra olive oil because that's very important in our boat. What else can we say about it? It opens up. Kai, you're not helping demonstrating right now. Okay, so it opens up. Oh. Of course, there's a kite board because it's Leo's boat. Actually, I use that one too. Um, but it can also turn into a bed. Leo slept here last night because he was too hot or mad at me. You will never really know. Kai, can you come out again? I don't want to leave you in there. And then we have a TV here that we haven't actually used in about two years, <laughs> but we used it a lot when we lived here for three years we actually lived on the boat. So that means three Danish winters, last one was quite intense. So there was a lot of just lying here trying to get warm while watching Netflix. We tried to put little personal touches in here, which is well, the whiteboard here. We have a sticker from your friends, Surf Club in Crete. This one's important. This is a little drawing made by Leo's grandfather, Peter Stefan. Um, he yeah. was an artist. And everywhere when you go into a Stefan, Stefan board, a Stefan house, you will see drawings and paintings by Peter. So it's not really a Leo home if there's nothing from his grandfather. We have the cheeky monkey. <laughs> monkey that my friends bought me. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's very Danish. I think most Danish homes have it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's my little Scandinavian touch Touch to the boat. In an already Scandinavian boat, but no, whatever. It's very Danish. You have to have it. 
So this is a galley, also known as the kitchen for landlubbers. Ours is not very big, but it's actually just about the right size. <laughs> we would like a little bit more space for cutting stuff, but you figure it out. Also storage here is amazing in the Halbergrassi. We have these, but we have a lot of canned food in there. <laughs> these big cupboards. You can roll these to the side, you have your plates, it's all very sailing friendly and then you have the refrigerator Ta -da! if you're not a boat person you might wonder about this it seems a bit impractical but when you're sailing it's very practical because nothing can really fall too much in here and that's what you want lots of drawers a nice big sink which is important when you're sailing because most of the time when you're sailing you want to eat but you do not want to do dishes it's just yeah whatever it doesn't happen so a lot of the time the dishes just end up going in here so it is quite small and some of our friends they think that when they come here it's basically like camping so they might bring their own wine opener and stuff like that because they think we don't have that here first of all it's completely ludicrous to think that i wouldn't have a wine opener on board it's probably the first thing i would buy anyway but we actually have a lot of space on board, so much that when we lived in a small house this winter we actually couldn't fit all the stuff in the little house, in the regular kitchen that we can actually fit here. So this is what was formerly known as a chart table, but due to Navionics and all the other lovely electronic gear that we have on board now to help us, it's been demoted to office or desk. So that's why we have our laptops here. It is again it's very practical. Let me show you the storage solutions on the Halbergrassi. Ta da! Okay, it looks quite messy in here, but we can have our gazillion of cables and our laptops and our power banks and our everything in here, which is quite brilliant. Normally it's kind of hard to find solutions for that, I find, when you live in a flat or a house, but Halbex got you covered. This is Leo's. Leo has a lot of boxes, but he just has a lot of various gear. <sighs> it's not sorted out. <laughs> and it's a mess. So Leo, I bought this box for Leo, and pretty much everywhere here is tools yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. And I don't touch it. No. No. <clears throat> Which means the mess. Another storage thing. Nothing goes to waste. Wait, it's kind of hard to see. But here. Wait. Whoop. See? Leo. See? S things goes everywhere. Storage solution. Whoa. Sometimes we have beer in here right now. <laughs> we have my favorite plant based barista milk. Product placement. Product placement. Yeah, I'm waiting for Wanda to sponsor me because I do. I think. I'm actually solely po uh, so I am solely responsible for all of their exports to Greece at the mm -hmm. moment. So they should definitely sponsor me. So let me take you to where the matching happens. But before we do that, we go through here. That's Wait. weird. <laughs> Let's say that. That's <laughs> what they're always saying, like in, in, in the porn movie. Hope to it. No. Maybe they do, I don't know, but okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. So this is quite low, even for me. I'm a very low, low person, short person. Yeah. Um, but actually this model is actually higher than the previous models. I, I'm not sure it's a walkthrough. For you it's definitely more of a crawl through, but it does about But nice. let's see. All right, engine room is in here, but they will show you that later. Welcome to my favorite room. Okay, you're not allowed there. He's not normally allowed there. What is it? You just want to be in the shot, huh? Yeah, it's all about you. So, what can we say about the bedroom? It's actually three beds, but we just use this side for storage. We have some clothes boxes that we have put in here because, well, mainly in the winter time, humidity issues and clothes is not too great. So we actually like having our clothes lying out here. But it's also nice because it gives us that extra storage space. And then here in the bed, actually Leo extended a little bit <laughs> by putting in a board here. The car sleeps in here. In winter, you know, we had the radiators on, so it was quite brilliant. They have been nice and snug next to us. And there's and more. We have more storage in here. The autopilot is in here. 
Uh, oh yeah, so do you, because we don't use the TV at the moment. But we do, we do have this wonderful little creation that Leo made. I think it's about 12 euro like uh, tablet solution things for the car. Yeah. That we put up here and then we can put the iPad. Kai. And Kai, excuse me, I'm talking. And watch movies in bed, which we still kind of do. So when I say we don't use the TV, it just means that we just use the iPad instead. Yeah. Oh! We actually do have more. I mean, we have more majority of our clothes here, but here I actually. I have some clothes in there as well because I need a little bit more space than Leo does. Yeah. That's just the truth of it. But in my defense, Leo rarely changes his underwear. He just Ew. goes for a swim in them. So that's. I changed my underwear. So now we're in the front, which is. Well, I don't know what to say about it. It's sort of a walk in closet. So it's very fancy, but we have, we have a walk in closet. So if I want to change, let's go. Bye. So it's a two-way door. It's a two-way door, which is brilliant. So this is the V-bath, also known as the guest room, the storage room. Um, it's a double bed. It's actually quite nice. My baby sleeps in here. <laughs> yeah. Actually, Leo has a lot more gear. When we sailed down here last year, it was completely full of surfboards and whatnot. Yeah. It also so. comes with a big hatch. Whoops. So you have nice, you can watch the stars, right? Yeah, it's very nice. And in the front, there's another little locker where you can also yeah. access the yeah. anchor winch. But we have our wetsuits in there. Yeah, we have all sorts of things. Yeah. Underneath here. Oh dear. We're not going to open up because that's a whole thing in of itself. Underneath one, we have our, all our camping gear, right? Which we never use. Which we never use, but it's there. Yeah. It's ready. And on the other, we have, well, we used to have more surfing gear underneath there. What do we actually have at the moment? We have sails. Sa two sails. Oh, yeah. A kite. Mm. Our harnesses. And oh, yeah, we do actually have stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> this is basically also the adventure closet because yeah. most of the time it's just where we stuff everything, including. Also, a spinnaker just goes in here, and all the boards, all the surf gear. But at the moment, we try to clean up for you. <laughs> it's usually a lot more stuff than this. You can close the store. We have a little extra security because it does tend to pop when we're sailing, which we don't love. But we say it also to... means that if we have crew on board that we don't like, we, we... can just lock them in here until we reach land and then Overboard. Yeah. So now we're in the bathroom. It is bigger than a Copenhagen bathroom, I have to say. So for me, it's actually a bit of an upgrade. We have a lovely big sink here. We have a mirror. We have lots of nice storage in here and here. The shower comes out of here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Leo installed a towel dryer. Oh, of course, you need a towel dryer. So we. It's a very luxurious boat. So this, for many, is the heart of the boat, the engine room. Uh, we don't like to call that the heart of the boat. We probably prefer to call the mast and the sail the heart of the <laughs> sailboat. Uh, it's our little black uh, secret, our black sheep in the boat. It's a Volvo Penta 2003 Turbo Edition. So far it has served us really, really good. Like, it, it always works, except one time where we had to remove the oil cooler. We never looked back. You can check that out on one of our previous episodes. We think it's quite a reliable engine. It works really well. It's super strong when you need it to. It's also okay in fuel consumption. And yeah, we don't do much to it. We just pet it a few times, <laughs> give it some fresh oil and some love, and it works perfectly. The engine room is quite nicely accessible, still it doesn't take too much space. Also in here there's our diesel, uh, Webasto diesel heater for the water. Another quite great thing about this boat is all the cabling and wiring, all the switchboards are still more or less original mm. and they work pretty fine. So we're really happy about that. Have a look, come and have a look at the engine. This is our engine and there goes the shaft. 
the sea valves, our water pump, our little diesel heater. That's installation made by me personally, so it looks absolutely terrible. And it is terrible, but it all seems to be working. <laughs> Uh, that's the shore power, some fuses for the anchor range, and a lot of cables. Ah, and here goes the steering cables. If you want a little bit more specification about our boat, stop here, pause the video, and read Leo's wonderful handwriting here. I am especially interested in the way he writes two. I have never seen it done that way before. It's special. Thanks for watching. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, it was nice having you. We hope you enjoyed the little boat tour. Please yeah. comment if you have any questions. Exactly. I mean, we could talk about our boat for hours and hours. Yeah, if, if probably you already did. <laughs> yeah, if you need any more technical aspects or questions, feel free. Yes. There's also a great community uh, mm -hmm. around. I guess every brand, but also Harbour Grassi in particular. Harbour Grassi is the best. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye bye.